I can't say I've ever shot a black bear with these 420 grain arrows, so we're going to see what actually happens here. Hello and welcome back to the Hunter Call of the Wild. So today we're here on Leighton Lake for some bow hunting. We're going to try to get ourselves a diamond with the bow. Uh, and we are kind of moving south to north because the wind is blowing south. So we should be good for any of the big animals uh, coming in from in front of us. They shouldn't be winding us. And we got scent eliminator anyway. So hopefully we can find ourselves a diamond. So I've not even called to this black bear. And it's pretty much in bow range. Uh, I don't know if you need the 420 grain arrows to actually get 100% on black bear. This guy's not going to be a diamond anyway. So I have the 600. And we will find out. If they give 100%. I'm going to say no based on the way he dropped. That didn't look right. And generally when you use too high of a weapon caliber, uh, that tends to happen. I guess we'll just try to call that female in after we pick this one up. And see if that is indeed the wrong weapon. And it is, so we'll have to use the 420 grain arrows for future black bear. I can't say I've ever shot a black bear with these 420 grain arrows, so we're going to see what actually happens here. Maybe. Okay, that was weird. I think it's trying to attack me. I've never heard that before. It started to, I don't know if it was going to stand up or what happened. And we ended up with a flesh wound, which might take it down because we saw the brown bear on the taiga go down from a flesh wound. So we're just going to slowly track it and see if the percentage drops. So that did take her down quite quickly. I saw her run over here and I was wondering where she went, but she just went down just inside the reeds here. So we just hit her in the skull, actually. Those 420 grain arrows might have enough penetration to hit the neck bone. I think, yeah, I was definitely off to the side of it by just a bit. It does look like it's possible to hit the neck bone going straight through the skull. So brain is 100% a possibility if we can't get a double lung shot. Uh, but the wind has done a 180 on me, so we're actually going to go somewhere up here in the north. Uh, maybe to Calburn and head south. That's a pretty small black tail, but we'll just take them with the bow. He already, he just gave a warning call and he's calm already. Did I use the wrong arrows? I don't think so. There's a doe still coming in. We'll just take her as well if we can. So there's actually a tiny white tail buck, which we should probably take sooner. He might spook. Have I just not realized how good these 420 grain arrows are, or am I using the wrong ones? Because I can't remember really dropping deer with them before, like back when I started bow hunting, but clearly those are the right arrows. Actually hit this guy through the neck. A couple of silvers on some pretty tiny deer, though. So the wind has shifted once again. And I think we're going to have to take a 30 meter shot on this moose if we want to uh, take her before she spooks. She'll get a bit closer, it looks like. Looks like a vital hit, so we'll take it. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't know if that was the one we just shot doing that as it was running away, but... Uh, what I was going to say was, I wonder if the wind direction is designed to shift so you can't just go from one end of the map to the other, always with the wind in your favor. I never really paid that much attention to it because I didn't bow hunt that often. But when I'm actually bow hunting and watching the wind, it seems like it does shift quite often. Uh, and I never tend to catch it switching, so I do wonder if it's like as you harvest an animal. But I think this moose is going to be down not far from here because we, I'm pretty sure, heard it just warning call all the way up this hill. And it is down just up here. So we'll grab her and see if the wind shifts. I'm going to stand so that we are facing directly the way the wind is blowing. 
No change. So maybe it's two animals. I'm going to probably take that moose with a gun. Because number one, she's downwind, and number two, I just want to see if that's the case. So our moose spooked as I was stalking it, because it was directly downwind. But what I found interesting was I left my computer for like two minutes, and when I came back, the wind had shifted a bit. So I wonder if after a harvest, the wind starts to shift a bit more quickly. Because I really am not understanding when the wind shifts. Hopefully we caught a lung there because I actually went for the neck and it looks like we did. Because it was definitely blowing kind of southwest and now we're looking at south-southeast. So I'm going to really try to pay attention. Wow, she didn't make it far. I'm going to really try to pay attention after claiming this elk. If the wind continues to shift east, I wonder if it goes in kind of a clockwise or counterclockwise direction all the time. And also, wow. <laughs> That's some penetration from those 600 green arrows. Uh, but I'm also going to try to pay attention to if it starts to move a bit more quickly. So I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to ignore that buck because it's directly downwind. There's a bull moose over here. So I'm just going to watch the wind move in his direction. Hopefully find a place to cross. And maybe we can get him as I'm watching the wind. So unfortunately, our moose spooked as I was trying to stock it. But we do have a white-tailed doe here, and it's been probably well over five minutes at least since we harvested our last animal, and the wind still seems to be just moving a bit further west. It was blowing kind of south-southeast when we started stocking the moose, and now we're looking at pretty much a southwest wind. So I don't know if the wind shift has anything to do with the harvest. There might be like a time where it just shifts like say every five minutes it changes uh, or maybe it's just always slowly shifting but there's definitely a pretty big wind shift in not that much time so if this doe would come over here so we can take it out i'm gonna have to change directions once again on where we're headed for the rest of the hunt that was a nice close shot through both lungs but yeah the wind direction changing definitely is interesting that's one thing we really don't have to worry about in classic the wind is pretty much constant if not constant and it definitely just changes my approach because i actually started out going this direction down where did we start i think we started at the uh the tent in runaki and now we are once again headed north so I'm actually gonna try to look into the wind shifting a bit more because I'm curious how it works we've got another female moose here that's about to step on us we'll take her out I keep fast traveling so I can hunt with the wind to my advantage but I have to do it so often it seems like because every time I I don't know for sure because I have to really pay attention to this because it can it can seem like it shifted and it doesn't if I hear an animal and start moving that way then the wind just shifts a little bit so I'm going to really focus on trying to move directly north and see if the wind ends up being completely uh, to my disadvantage for the rest of the hunt I think I might be using the wrong arrows for this deer, but it's a doe anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I do think I have the uh, 600 grain arrows equipped, and I also had the bow zeroed for 40 meters. So if she feels like stopping, there we go. Not a drop shot. In fact, that looks like a flesh wound. Let's see what arrows I have equipped. It is the... 600 grain arrows, so I don't think she's going far anyway. So our whitetail has a medium bleed rate, even with just the flesh wound from the 600 grain arrows. And there's a cow moose here. She's just not in a position I can really take a shot. If she'll take a few more steps. Maybe. That'll work. Whoa, okay. That scared me. Uh, um... <laughs> 
she'll probably go down about the same place as the whitetail. I'm going to stay on the whitetail's tracks. Because the uh, vital blood of the moose is going to be easier to see. Actually, she went down, looks like, before the whitetail is going to go down. We might have actually double lunged her from the angle we had. And I did see a coyote take off as well. I'm not sure if that was... A male or a female, but as close as it let me get, I don't think it's going to be a diamond. So here is our white-tailed doe. We actually shot too far forward and hit her through both legs. But the wind is definitely starting to shift pretty severely now. It's still not horrible uh, for having animals smell us, but it's definitely getting worse. So I don't think I was just getting turned around and thinking that the wind shifted like a lot. I think it will eventually with a few more harvests uh, in just a bit more time. So it looks like for the second hunt in a row here on Leighton Lake, we're going to be ending with like a 170s to 180s moose, which hopefully you guys are going to be able to see at some point. There he is at 30 meters, so we'll try to make the shot in the rain and... Probably a bit of wind as well. I hope that caught lungs. I do see a lot of blood. It almost looks non-vital. It is non-vital. It may have hit a bit further back than I thought. But at least that'll take him down. So we did manage to find our moose. Fortunately, the non-vital shot was able to take him down. Let's just see what we got for a trophy rating. 173 and still a silver despite the 0% quick kill bonus. Looks like we hit him, yeah, in the stomach. I guess that's about where I saw. I thought we hit him actually a lot closer to the front leg, but unfortunately no diamond today. At least we ended up with a decent moose, and we had a fair number of harvests for sure. So with that, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next one.